Looking still at the little letter from Jude, this might be a fourth uh, nugget of truth that we get beginning in verse 11. Still speaking of false teachers and preachers, um, he says, Woe to them! They've gone the way of Cain, the murderer, mur murdered his brother Abel, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the error of Balaam. That's something we can't get into. That's a false prophet back in the Old Testament. And they've perished in the rebellion of Korah. Korah was an Israelite who stirred up a rebellion against Moses, and he's the one that the ground opened up and swallowed him and his entire family and possessions um, and then closed again on him. <clears throat> Continues describing these people. These are men who are hidden reefs in your love feasts when they feast with you without fear. Caring for themselves, clouds without water, carried along by winds, autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead, pulled up by the roots. Their wild waves of the sea casting up their own shame like foam, wandering stars for whom the blackness of darkness has been reserved forever. Now that's quite a description. This shows us why we are to be careful who we listen to. And I don't want to be, um, I don't want to sound like a, uh, the Grinch that stole Christmas or be some kind of a griper or some kind um, of a negative person here. But not everyone talking about heaven is going there. Not everyone teaching about Jesus knows him. These people in this same passage just a few verses later are referred to as people who are devoid of the Spirit of Christ. They don't know God, even though they may have a great we, in the worldly terms, a large ministry, a big church, lots of books that they've written. We have to be Bereans, if you remember the Bereans. They were a church in the book of Acts that when Paul came to them and preached the gospel of Jesus, which to them, as Jews, was news. It was new. They hadn't heard that before. And so this man, Paul, shows up who, by the way, has the power and seems to exhibit it to raise the dead and heal people, do all kinds of things. Nevertheless, the Berean church wasn't gullible like so many Christians are today. They didn't open their mouth and swallow everything, even someone the likes of Paul said to them. But what does it say about the Bereans? It says they searched the scriptures daily to see if these things, what Paul was telling them, were so. I don't care how successful or authoritative or whatever any preacher, pastor, author seems to be. Everything that anyone says needs to be taken over and laid down next to scripture and compared, is this biblical? We, that is our only safe way to test what appears to be gold, to make sure it isn't fool's gold, and there's plenty of it out there. So this is quite a description of these people. And speaking more of their character, in verse 12 that I just read, it said they care for themselves. The original language says they, they are shepherds who shepherd themselves. So it clearly is talking about shepherds. It's talking about official people, leaders, ordained, ministers. But they look out for themselves. And it later says also that they flatter people for the sake of gaining an advantage. And the advantage, particularly, is 
your pocket. That's where that this is not new. None of this is new. And we are to watch out carefully. And earlier in Jude, it says, I am to earnestly, we are to earnestly contend for the faith. The Greek word there comes, well, the word we translate is agonize. Earnestly contend to agonize in contending for the faith. That means you may have tension. That means, means you may have uh, friendships that are ruptured. It means, too, that we're not, we're not to be cruel and cutting and harsh and mean. But at the same time, we're not supposed to. It's okay for our blood pressure to get up. This is serious. The, the, if we follow carefully and put into practice the things that many of the authors and preachers of today are telling us, we will miss heaven. So it matters. That's why we're to agonize, to identify and resist whatever is not straight from the Bible. So lay that to heart. And may we not be gullible and compare with Scripture everything we hear. Father in heaven, you know that there's always error, always has been, and that the devil is very good at dressing up error to look very benign, very attractive, very good, appealing, but it's deadly. So help us, Lord, not to be scared to death, but to be on guard and to patiently await your guidance and not to rely on our own judgment. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen.